Hey guys, welcome to the hack for um, the, pro the project manager's management simulation for the diamond level for step C. So first of all, I hope you have completed step B. Step B is the most critical piece and probably the most toughest piece of the business. Here is why. That is because it is extremely unstructured. It depends upon flawless communication. It requires negotiation skills. And it requires a little bit of selling skills too. But the most important piece that you'll learn out of step B is you have to prepare. If you don't prepare, you will not be successful. You won't be able to get this experience. If you can get this experience, you can always get to an interview. The problem is, when you get to the interview and you're asked tough questions about project management and if you have the experience to do it, you can cite these examples. Trust me, it'll work. You'll inspire them rather. If, if you think that the interviewer is not happy, tell them, okay, why don't you do this simulation? Send any of your project managers and get them to do it. Trust me, when you're gutsy enough, people listen. Okay, so let's go to the next steps, which is, this is where one of the key pieces of project management lies. It is called drawing up the contract with a customer. Now, what do I mean? The customer has agreed to do something. Your team basically has the ability to execute. You need to do a statement of work. A SOW is very common in any cloud services company or consulting company. If you cannot do a contract by explaining the exact statement of purpose or statement of work and then outline the next couple of, uh, you know, the, the dates, the timelines, etc., that is not a statement of work. So to drop a contract, you don't have to like, you know, type and, you know, create a legal document. It's just simple through email. Use your pstarfish.org email and say, okay, I'm just, I just want to ensure that we are good on the statement of work. Please confirm by saying I'm good or if there are changes to be done, please make it now. Be crystal clear. That's a project manager's job. Once you've done, you know, signed the contract, remember, it seems you have already done 50% of the clarity stuff, which is you have set the correct expectation. You have set the correct expectation with the customer. Now it's very important for you to get back to the team and say, hey guys, we, we, we agreed to this. Are we good? Even if it's for 15 minutes, doesn't matter. Get the team. Work with your virtual admin or use the workplace and get everybody's commitment. If you don't have people's commitment in writing or in agreement somewhere, you just don't know if your team is going to <laughs> become a spoiler. And it happens. It happens. You have to strongly negotiate both sides. So set the correct expectation with both sides and then move to the next step, which is plan and strategize the execution. Now, when I say plan and strategize, I think the work is going to be easy. You know, how much difficulty is there to do some research and all that stuff? Remember, Project Starfish people's skills are in the knowledge-based business development, which is doing market analysis, finding contacts from LinkedIn or some other place. And these are exceptionally time suck activities. Why are these time suck activities? Because it is basically trying to find out knowledge from the internet and it takes a lot of time. Startups don't have time. There's too much of work to do. And that is the pain point. That is what we do. So that's the reason we've had so many companies work with us. So when you plan and strategize the execution, build a plan for the team. When you build a plan, don't just direct the activity and say, okay, A, this is yours, or John, this is yours, Mary, this is yours, or Jill, this is yours, or Nazreen, this is yours. Not at all. That's not the way it works. You have to say, okay, Jill, if this is, I'm giving this to you, here's the timeline. Can you do this today, this tomorrow, and this 
on the third day. Then you say, Nazreen, this is the activity that I want to give to you. Would you be able to uh, confirm that you can do it now? And you can do spend one hour and get it done tomorrow. And we get it, get the rest of it done on the next day. Can we arrive at, um, always mention that can we arrive at a, a time where we can all catch up and review it? So timelines, setting goals and expectations are very key. Use the workplace to get everybody's commitment and be in touch with them saying, hey guys, just let me know how things are going, how I can help. You always offer help. If you suddenly vanish and the team is executing, what do you think happens? Nothing gets done. Which means when the mice, remember there's a saying, when the cat is out, the mice should play. So which means keep in touch. Use a workplace, which is a Facebook workplace, to put your comments and ask people and say, hey guys, if you have any problem, let me know. Call people through Facebook if required. So that way, when you're free, you can always squeeze, squeeze in time to communicate and even for five minutes and find out if they're doing the work well. So now, when you delegate the execution plan, it is time for you to ensure that they execute it right because your head is on the guillotine if they don't because a customer is going to say, hey, you just promised this and now you cannot deliver. Which means when you supervise, do not leave everything to your virtual admin. It's not right. And which is the reason I constantly say, if you do not do this right, when it comes to the real opportunity, they're going to find out that you're struggling with execution. You have, no company wants to pay people whom they hire for money and then train them. Why? Because it's a waste of time. Your point in the interview would be that you are ready. You have done these projects and this is what you should articulate. Make sense? So when you supervise people, do not be a boss. Do not like micromanage. Ask people how they want to be managed. Be crystal clear. Be, don't be too human. Don't be too political. But tough love, remember. Okay? But when you're managing people, remember, guys, you don't have control over them. They're not your employees. You can only influence. Right? So establishing the rapport is very, very critical. Now, the last piece, which is step number seven. Written handoff. Now, why written handoff? Because if you cannot get a written handoff from the customer, then you did not close the activity. Are you aware that project managers have been blamed in a big way in companies that I know where the project schedule and expenses became three times? Why? Because the project manager did not do written handoffs get used to written handoffs but to do written handoffs remember get the customer on a phone call and articulate the results if you cannot communicate flawlessly and explain how you have you know how the project is being delivered there's no value in it the written handoffs are important for many reasons first of all it shows the completion of the project that you did your project right point number two is the relationship with this person is very critical because this person might have a lot of contacts in the industry. Most startup guys are, don't come from school. They are like, you know, people like me with 15, 16, 17 years of experience with, you know, uh, background from say Harvard Business School or, you know, Stanford and all that stuff. They have contacts. You can get a recommendation from them too, which is the third point. On your resume, get their, get their name as a reference. Very critical, trust me. And if in the civilian industry, get a civilian who can vouch for what you did. So written handoff for you has several reasons. But written handoff is a complete due diligence that project managers should never, uh, should never forget. Okay, guys, that ends these steps. C, but don't go away because we got to quickly go through these steps again so you're very clear. Okay, so... Guys, we know that uh, you should have completed the previous cycle, which is very important. Negotiating both sides are critical, which is you got to ensure that both sides understand what they are about to expect from each other. Ensure that you communicate thoroughly 
And remember, success is always in the contract. Set the expectations right from the start. Now, plan and strategize, which means when you plan and strategize, do not just give people tasks, give them timelines too. Ensure that you get their uh, written yes and get everything done through the Facebook workplaces. That is the place where everybody works. Get used to working in workplaces because one of the things that project managers do in, in, in the big companies when they become project managers is that they have to work through centralized document flow or workflow systems. So use the you know Facebook workplace uh, to say that you've got experience with workflow and document management systems. Now when you delegate based on your um, you know based on how you understand the team take people's feedback get a yes to everything. When you supervise ensure that you manage the execution process which means keep in touch with people use the Facebook messenger and calls and video conference to ensure that you keep in touch do not just you know run away if you do trust me you won't get things done okay last piece written handoff i think we have spoken enough which means communicate well deliver correctly and collect the check okay guys so before we end i just want to quickly tell you that how do you measure that you're in the right direction first of all I hope you have applied your due diligence of project management and your certification into the skill building um, management simulation. Second is ensure that you measure the efficiency and the effectiveness. Both are equally important. You are, as a person, a project manager is also responsible for profitability. Trust me, you are going to be fined if you go above the time okay so ensure that you understand that profitability is decided by dollars earned and subtract dollars find right because your delay basically creates a problem for the company so therefore profit profitability gets reduced now last thing do this as a responsibility as well which means with your experience you're also helping others succeed Project managers put people first. Get that habit. So, check again. Did you elevate your position? Which means you are at this level right at the bottom. Now, are you at, are you good with digital worker management? Which is, can you manage people and process? That is very important because as you do that and gain experience, your job is to ultimately get the people process and technology management experience now how much do these positions pay if you're right at the bottom it pays you about 40 grand to 60 grand if you become a digital worker manager or project manager I can tell you it gives you about 80,000 to 100,000 if you're a digital tech management guy probably make about 140,000 in uh, to start off with to about $300,000 in big companies Okay, guys, so remember, do things differently. Thank you very much. If you have concerns, reach out to us. And as I said, welcome. And I hope you have enjoyed the management simulation, which is completely real way to get work experience. Take care, guys.